Okay, this quick video, I'm going to explain what it is that we're actually doing here and so that it's that it makes sense to you, it's understandable so that when you're you're getting these answers, you understand what they mean. Okay, this section is on average average rate or rates of change. average rates of change let me let me remind you because this is very similar to something you've done in the past oh by the way this graph paper if you're in class i probably gave you a copy if not remember uh, you can print out a copy of these if you're at home or you didn't go to school um, you can print out a copy of this paper on uh, go to go to our class in schoology go to the yellow folder and in the yellow folder right at the bottom it says graph paper the one that has two two on a sheet only two okay so you'll have this graph paper remind me remind me to give this a copy of this to you if you're in class okay average rates of change that's what we're doing let me tell you how you saw this or what this means back from like algebra one or algebra two in algebra one in Algebra 1, we were, we were not looking at uh, functions, right? We were, we were not looking at all these curves or graphs that have all these different turns. In Algebra 1, or maybe even Algebra 2, we had straight lines, right? Let's say you had a line that contained a point here and a point here. And let me zoom in so you can see these points. And through those points existed a line. Remember back then you were just focusing on graphing lines and it was just linear equations. It was just a line, right? Try, try to draw your best line through those two points like that, right? And here, if you remember for a line, you try to determine the slope of the line. Remember that? You guys remember the slope of a line? And just to find the slope, the slope, remember the slope kind of was a definition of the rise over the run, if some of you remember that. But if you didn't have a graph, there was a formula, right? And by the way, slope was this letter M. Remember they used the letter M? And there was a formula for slope. The formula is this. M is equal to what? Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Is that ringing a the bell there? This was the formula for slope. But remember for slope they used the letter M. Which is right here. Slope is the letter M, right? Slope. But in this situation, uh, again, you wouldn't have the graph. And this x1 and x2 and this y1 and then this y2, you actually got them from these points. Remember, they, they give you just the coordinates. So let's just pretend we don't have the graph there. And they would say, OK, find the slope. And this point is what? This point is negative 6, 1. This point is the point negative 6, 1. And the other point is what? Negative 2, 7. So remember, you, you didn't have the graph. And without the graph and just knowing those two points, um, you were able to substitute those two points in there. Anybody remember that? Uh, I'll just do this real quick. Remember for the first point you put x1 and y1 and then you put x2, y2. Well, this was the first point, so this is the first x and the first y. This was the second point, the second x and the second y. 
And then pretty much if you look at this formula, I'd put a number here for y2. Which one's y2? Something minus y2 minus y1. So anyways, if I go, if you notice it's it's y2, some number y2 minus y1. And I'm just going to put an empty box for right there for now. Over and then x2 minus x1. And then you just had to put the right numbers right in the right place. Let's look at the top. For up here, y2 minus y1. What is y2? This one's y2, so this is what? Um, 7 minus y1. y1 is 1. And then x2 is uh, negative 2. And then minus x1, which is a negative 6. So this would be what? 7 take away 1 over, right? 7 take away 1 here for the numerator. Negative 2, and then this negative and this negative, that would be negative 2 plus 6. And then you'd get the answer, right? You'd, you'd find the slope. The slope would be what? M is equal to, what happens when I reduce this? I get 6 over 6 over 4, which, which in turn is going to reduce to what? 3 halves, right? I can reduce 6 over 4 to 3 halves. And this was the slope. This was the slope. Um, and pretty much what did that mean? Remember this is rise over run. Because this line is consistent. So if you look here, if I rise 3 and run 2, if I go to this point, you would go up 3, 1, 2, 3, and then 1, 2. And then you'd hit a point, and then 1, 2, 3, and then 1, 2. So this was a constant. There wasn't too much change. The slope described how steep this line was, or how steep this line is. And if it had a positive slope, if it had a positive slope, well, it was a line that was positive like this. If it had a negative slope, if there was a negative slope, it was because you had a line that was dropping this way, right? Remember, a positive slope are lines that are kind of going from left to right and taking you up. A negative slope would be a line dropping this way. But again, you wouldn't graph it. You'd just do everything algebraically, right? Okay, so... That's the slope, or that's the rate of change of this line. It's 3 over 2, up 3 over 2, up 3 over 2. That kind of describes the steepness of this line. If it was like this, if this was kind of how steep it was, or if it's flatter. I mean, the slope describes how the steepness of the line is, right? Okay, that is slope. Well, it's the same thing what we're doing now. Okay, now for pre-calculus, let me use the second graph over here. Now for pre-calculus, we're not dealing with simple straight lines. You're dealing with like curves, right? You can have, you can have a graph that does something like this, right? You can have a function or a graph that does something like that. All right, and they're going to ask you, they're going to ask you, okay, let's say between negative 9 and about maybe negative 7. Between negative 9 which negative line, if I go up, it probably hits right here. And seven, it kind of hits right here. I know that's not a straight line, but if we were to kind of fit a straight line there, we can kind of get, we can kind of get the idea of what that slope is. Well, that slope of just this part of the line and remember, this is the interval what? This interval 
is only looking between the, the x negative 9 and what? Negative 7. You can have it written like that, or they can write it as an inequality. And I think on delta math, they write it as an inequality. Oh, well, the value of x is... The value of x is uh, greater or equal to 9 and less than or equal to negative 7, right? On the book, on the book, they write it like this. And on delta math, they have it like this. But that's if I look between here and here. Okay, the graph has a certain rate of change, a certain slope. So the rate of change, which is the name of this section, is equal to what? It's really kind of looking at, it's the same as like looking at a slope of a line, the slope. But again, it, it's not just, it, it's only looking at the curve at a certain piece of the interval. If I look over here and I say, okay, what is the rate of change from negative 5 to positive 1? Well, at negative 5, the point is here, and at 1, the point is here. See, that would be a different line. That would be a different line. So that's why you can have different rates of change because it depends on the interval that you're looking at, right? This one, this first one had the interval from negative nine to seven. You're, I'm only looking here. This one, the interval, or I'm just looking at the x's was between negative five and seven. Between negative five and seven, uh, if I look at this line where negative 5 is here, point here, and I'm sorry, negative 5 and negative 1, you see it has a, has a different rate of change. And by the way, this first one would, is going down, so that would have a negative, a negative value, a negative slope, whereas this one's going up, right? So you're going to evaluate rates of change. Um, but you're not going to see anything graphically. We're actually going to do everything uh, using this formula. Okay, so let me have you compare this formula with now look at the one that's going to be, you know what, I'll put them side by side right here. In Algebra 1, it was like this. M is equal to Y2 minus Y1 over x2 minus x1, right? This is algebra 1. This is an algebra 1 for slope. Again, in algebra 1, this was the formula for slope. Now, in pre-calculus, they're not calling it slope. They give it a new name. Remember, there's a new name and a new look. Then for This is for algebra 1, right? In algebra 1, you see this in pre-calculus this is the formula but it, it just works different in pre-calculus it looks like this the average rate of change they're going to still use the word m which it's it's kind of, it does stand for slope but they give it a new name right they call it average rate of change and here's the formula look at this look at this formula for pre-calc it says f of x2 minus f of x1 over x2 minus x1 oh my god This is the one for Algebra 1. And notice that it's something, take away something in the numerator. A value subtracted to a value. And then again over here, something subtract something. Well, it's the same thing happening here. Look at this formula. 
It just looks a little bit, well, a lot more intimidating, right? The formula still is for average rate of change because that's what it's called now, remember? New name, new look. Now for average rate of change. This is the formula. And notice how it's almost the same. It, I mean, it looks different, but it's still something. Subtract something on the top in the numerator, right? Something, a value, subtract another value. And then the same thing over here. Oh, as a matter of fact, these look exactly the same. X2 minus X1. Okay, so that's what we're doing. That's what an average rate of change is. An average rate of change is, and they have to give you an interval, what what would be the line if i kind of make that curve and assume that it's a straight line what what would be the slope that that's an average rate of change okay so on the next video i'll i'll work out the problems and i'll show you how to do that